expand on something that you've said. She's saying, you know, we, in the material world, we get a couch, then we want a table, we get the table, then we want the rug. And when you meditate, you tend to detach from those things. What I would say is it's not that you tend to detach from them. It's that you become so full on the inside that the presence or absence of these things is no longer that which runs your life. There is a carpet, wonderful. There's no carpet, wonderful. There's a couch, great, you sit on it. There's no couch, great, you sit on the floor. <laughs> So it's, it's not that we've, that we've detached from things. It's that we've reattached our focus and our energy and our priorities and our awareness onto something that's so much more valuable, deeply valuable. You know, when we get things, why do we yearn for things? Why do we temporarily feel better? It's a very, very interesting blend of the spiritual and the psychological. You know, when we do yagna, for example, one of the things that we always talk about in explaining the yagna is how fire, the flames always go up. And the reason being that the source of fire is the sun. So the flames are always returning to the sun. Water comes down. The source of water is the earth or the ocean. We can certainly use terms like density and gravity, but that just, it just names it. The ultimate reason for it has to do with the source. Now, our source is actually boundless infinite, one with the universe, and yet we've become sort of trapped, you can say, in this body, or rather trapped by our identification with the body. The body is a great vehicle, if we understand it as a vehicle. If we understand it as self, then we're trapped. And so the true self call it the capital S self, is always yearning to return back to its source, which is expansiveness, which is infinite, which is full and whole and complete. When you look at words that we use to describe ecstasy, whether it's ecstasy of being in love, whether it's ecstasy in a spiritual term, whether it's just general ecstasy, we tend to talk with words like merging and melting and bathing and swimming and fireworks and oceans, right? They're words that are expansive. Now, we take it a step deeper. When I want to buy something, let's say I'm walking to my office every day from my home, and I see a painting in a store window every day. I admire the painting. I love it. And every day, twice a day, I look at the painting and I think, oh God, if only I had that painting. One day, I buy the painting. I'm thrilled. What do I do? I bring it home, and I put it in my closet. Now, I never see the painting. I used to at least see the painting twice a day, to and from the office, and be able to enjoy the art. Now I never see it. It's in my closet, waiting for the right place to hang it up. And yet, I'm actually content because I now own the painting. And it makes us wonder what is really going on here. The joy of art would be to behold it. And if all we were really interested in was beholding the art, 
I'd be very happy to see it twice a day. And I certainly wouldn't be happy to just have it in my closet. But what's happened is, in purchasing the painting, even though it's now stuck in my back closet, it has become part of me. I have expanded on some level. Whenever we buy new things, if you look at the body language when people buy things, it's look at what I have, look at my new dress, look at my new handbag, look at my, right? I've expanded, I now include the new dress. I include the handbag. I'll never wear it, I'll never use it because I've already got too many dresses, too many handbags. But I've expanded, it's now part of who I am. We shop, we eat, we do so many things to feel a sense of expansion. And yet, of course, at the end of the day, all they do is end up suffocating us. Because all we've done, rather than setting the self free, We've stuck more on top of it. So we've actually ended up suffocating the self even more than it was to begin with. Everything extra we dump on top of the self. I know I'll get just another degree. Then I'll be happy. Right? Another dress, another pair of shoes another artwork, a chocolate cake. All these things that are somehow going to fill me are just really genuine but misplaced efforts of this true self to expand. And the minute that in our spiritual practice we actually have an experience of expansion, <coughs> Well, then we don't need the couch to feel expanded. Sure, okay, we're going to have guests. We realize that putting them on the floor isn't so appropriate. So we go out and we buy a couch. It's not that we don't use things. It's not that we don't have nice things. It's not that we don't wear dresses or have handbags. It's that my yearning for them is not there. Because I don't need that to feel expanded. I may need a handbag to put my things in. I don't have pockets. So I'm going to carry something. It's a lot easier to stick them in a bag. But I don't need it to feel like part of me. And this is what happens. So we haven't become detached from them. But we no longer have that dysfunctional need for them to fulfill roles that they never possibly could have filled anyway. But that in our yearning to go back to our source, we've put on them. 